things that I wanted to ask you about that's really evident in what you've just been saying is how conscious you are of, of what you're doing and what techniques you're actually using so that you can communicate those and that must be really great for your students is that something that you've always been conscious of or have you have you had to become conscious in order to then teach these things yes had to become conscious because instruction in harmonica before that was extremely vague it was usually like all right do that and then you no do this and, and that was kind of it. I remember in my first days of teaching the uh, uh, harmonica masterclass workshops, I would be sitting right next to uh, uh, an artist, and we're talking about certain things. And it's pretty evident that they don't know what's happened inside of their mouth because it's an oral tradition, like listen, copy, try to use. And the best instructors that have worked for me through the years, especially like Dennis Gerling and Joe Felisco, have this learning style of wanting to learn what's happening inside the body. Uh, so they can take their own playing to the next level. For me to teach, so I started teaching when I was 18. There weren't any books on blues harmonica, so I had to develop my own material and figure out what was happening inside of my mouth. And uh, developing that over time, because sometimes those early perceptions were incorrect. People will talk about, well, bending is achieved by lowering your tongue in the front. But what they're not re actually realizing is that's just a byproduct of raising the back. <laughs> it's actually the back that is creating the frontal chamber that's tuning your mouth to the note that you're trying to bend to. So uh, a lot of uh, experimenting, especially when it comes to techniques, one of the things that I've always liked to do is, for example, when I was writing the Improvising Blues Harmonica book, when I discovered chorus forms, basically how repetition is used within a chorus to create great solos and uh, instrumentals, is that once I started hearing this phrasing after having some goosebumps, like, does little Walter do this in other songs? Oh, he does. Do other harmonic players do this? Oh, they do. Do other musicians in the blues do this? They do. I spent two years going through every harmonic instrumental ever recorded in the blues and analyzing it for the use of these phrasing types so that when I present it to my students, I can confidently say, this is the way that it's commonly done. Oh, by the way, these are some neat variations. Uh, of course, you do what you want, but this is this is what makes this stuff great, you know. So for me, I find it very exciting to, to figure out something because obviously we can't see it. My student can't see me; they can't see themselves. Uh, to be able to use the same type of verbiage that vocal instructors would use. You've probably heard vocal instructors um, in a room next to you while you're teaching private lessons, and they're they're singing some of the craziest sounding things, scales and warm up exercises. And uh, we do the same thing, and that's one of the reasons why I did that uh, study with Stanford University on showing how bending works via me sitting in an MRI machine actually showing what's happening inside the mouth. Not only did I want to do that to really understand is what I'm teaching actually accurate, and fortunately it was, uh, would I also come away from that learning some things, and I did, uh, and to be able to show students this is actually exactly what's happening when I'm doing a tongue block three draw whole step bend and a pucker three draw whole step bend. For some people, it doesn't help at all. They just need to experiment with it. Some of them, that's like the difference between them getting it and not getting it. So it's, I find it really fascinating to explore that and then to, uh, for each student in their own learning style to be able to have some tools to say, try this. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your School of the Blues. Sure. So that started in early 2002. And basically, was uh, my desire was to put together like-minded individuals who were focused on blues. Uh, John Garcia on guitar, Frank DeRose on bass, Kevin Coggins on drums. And we have some satellite instructors that we recommend people. But those are the instructors that are in-house in the school. They're all musicians that have many, many decades of performance experience, band leaders, they're all published authors, some are Grammy-nominated musicians, for example. And luckily, all, the, all my first picks all said yes, and they've been teaching at the school since 2000, uh, 2002. And my goal is to give students context. So when they go into a local music store to take lessons, they take their lessons, and then they leave. The music instructors rarely will work together to help provide opportunities for their students. 
And what I wanted to do with School to Blues was to say, you're now entering a community of people who love this style of music and everything that it involves. And we do the private lessons, of course. I do a harp night every fifth week, Tuesday. All the students get together. and It's a social thing, but the students also play for each other. Each student goes around the room, plays a little bit of what they're working on. I might back them on the bass or with a jam track or something. What's neat about that is that all the other students get to hear a whole bunch of new songs. They're like, I, I like what Dave was playing. I'm gonna, What's the name of that? And then they might start studying it. It uh, gives them a chance to network as well. I try to really facilitate. If I know certain students live in certain areas that are close to each other, I'll say, you might want to hang out with Rita, for example. She's working on this, and you might like this. And That's helpful. As you know, harmonica players, there's, we're kind of spread all around the world, so it's neat for them to know that they live within a certain radius. I do jam sessions once a month, so as the student is uh, ready, once they've uh, practiced a song, memorized it, and they can play it with me, I'm getting them ready to play with the band. They get up and play at the jam sessions. The other thing, too, is when they decide they want to take their music and place it into a broader context, not just me sitting with a band. I want to be part of the band. We have a band training program. There's a six-month program that is a performance training program that helps them to be uh, basically ready to work in an ensemble setting. Then the band training program, they go through a six-month program that uh, walks them through what it means to actually run a jam session, what it means to uh, either build a band or become part of the band. And once they go through that six-month program, they are ready really to be one of our local professional musicians. Aki Kumar, for example, is a good success story in, in the Bay Area of someone who went through that program is one of the important harmonica players now in the Bay Area. Uh, George Bisharat, for example, just released his uh, second CD to, to good acclaim. Though he didn't go through that band training program, it's a good example of someone who came to me already being a very good harmonica player who you know, just helped them take it to the next level. So I work with students who are beginning who just want to play for their own enjoyment to uh, most of the students who want to work and play, of course, for their own enjoyment, but would like to go sit in if someone's throwing a 50th birthday bash, they want to be able to get up and blow a tune or two. And I have a probably about one quarter of the students are very serious and are either already professional musicians or in bands or really want to be and um, they're all fun to work with. Sounds brilliant. I'm, I'm moving to America. <laughs> <laughs>